Hi, my name is Kevin Fair. I'm with Cry to God Ministries. I'm here in New Orleans, standing on Bourbon Street, uh, 2011, with a street preacher, Corey. And you are face to face with a street preacher, and he's allowed me to have an interview with him that you may know who this guy is that stands out in the middle of this party, they call, with a giant cross uh, and testifying of the significance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Corey, a lot of people see you standing out here, and they might even be afraid to come up to you. And so I'm bringing you to them. Right. And uh, a lot of people probably would ask, man, what? What makes you do this? What causes you to stand out here in the midst of this? Well, it's what Jesus did for me. He saved me from uh, my wickedness. I was uh, had problems with drugs, alcohol, and fornication, and he uh, delivered me out of that. And uh, he put me right back in the same wicked world that I came out of, and I still uh, I don't desire that anymore. All I desire is to stand up for Jesus and tell people what he's done for me. And I, I just want, you know, I want to warn people that uh, God's wrath is coming on their wicked ways, you know. And I just thank the Lord that he didn't kill me, uh, let, allow me to die. I can tell you about uh, probably 13 different near-death experiences I've had. And uh, God, you know, allowed me to be alive still. And I don't think he's going to give me many more chances, but, you know, I finally wised up. So I read my Bible, and I, I realize that, you know, I, I'm nothing without him. I need well, him. Corey, Corey, why did you you choose this method? I mean, there's, you can go door to door. You can have people come over for dinner. You can, you know, do friendship evangelism. Why do you stand out in the midst of this noise and, and preach the gospel this way? Well, when I lived a wicked life, this is where I came. And, uh, you know, I just figured maybe I'd see some old friends and mourn them. And uh, there's a lot of people out here that are, uh, if they died tonight, they would go to hell. And, uh, Corey, how long have you been standing out, uh, out on the street trying to get people to uh, realize the love of God and Jesus? I think I got started about 12 o'clock today. And uh, just been around giving out tracks and, what, well, you know, anybody who stopped and talked to me, I've been trying to warn them. How about this ministry that you've been in, involved in, the street uh, work? Well, I started last year and uh, with churchofbrookhaven.org and we uh, go to college campuses and Mardi Gras and just different events around uh, the country. and. Uh, and I just got on fire for the Lord, you know, that's all I want to do. I quit my job so I could do it more. Wow. I mean, a lot of people think that this is really not fruitful. These people are, are just full of, you know, alcohol and, and drugs and, you know, that, I mean, what do you say to people when they say that this is unfruitful? Well, I, I can see, you know, some people's uh, a change in some people's lives. Like today, there was a street concert over there by Cafe Du Mall, and I saw some of those people that were uh, mocking us this other day with the piercings and the tattoos all over their face. I saw them weeping and crying and praising the Lord. You know, it, people change. You know, we just you remember those people who were mocking us the other day with all the piercings. I saw and the dreadlocks. Well, one of those, uh, three of those people were over there, and they uh, were weeping and crying out for God, and people were witnessing to them. And that's why I do it, because just to see one or two come to the God, you know, that's the reason why I do it. Uh, Corey, uh, Corey, my howdy. Name, my name's Johnny. Oh, I thought it was Corey. I'm sorry, Johnny. <laughs> it's Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Um, why, uh, I mean, how do you deal with all the people saying these, all kinds of mean and nasty things? Some people want to beat you up. I mean, how, how do you deal with that, Johnny? Well, uh, the way I see it, you know, they, they, they can do nothing to me that, uh, I mean, they could probably kill, come by and shoot me and kill me, but to be absent of the body, to be present with the Lord. And, uh, you know, I, like I said uh, earlier, I could, i tell you about 13 different near-death experiences I've lived through and in, uh, in my sin and you know God saved me from that surely he'll save me from these uh, these heathens out here 
And uh, I don't have to fear them. All I have to fear is God. That's so true. <laughs> that is so true. You know, uh, uh, Johnny. You know, there's there's a lot of things happening out here. The Bible says we're in a spiritual warfare. You know what I mean? And that you're doing spiritual warfare. That's right. And uh, has God has God showed you in your own personal life? You know, out here, how he has protected you or or showed you what he is doing in you in the midst of this, giving you boldness or courage or, or strength or how he has protected you? Well, it, um, you, you know, I do understand that uh, Satan is much more powerful than I am. But since I have God with me, God has already won the victory, has already won. And I have Jesus living in my heart, and I'm uh, with a band of angels right now. You can't really see them right now, but they're with me, and they're protecting me. And that, that's what I have my faith in is them. I'm not, you know, uh, going to be fear. Sometimes, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes I do get scared when the drunks come and yelling in my face and kicking on my cross, but I'm still going to, uh, you know, uh, know that God is with me. God. Johnny, who gives you the authority to come out here to, to, to you know, do this? Well, well, I can tell you this. It wasn't the mayor, <laughs> but it was Jesus Christ, my, my Lord and my Savior. Uh, Johnny, how do, you, how do you deal with people saying that, they're, that you're judging them or that you hate them? I mean, do you hate them? I do not hate them. I just, uh... I just realize that they're on the wrong road, and I want to tell them, you know, warn them that, you know, they're on the wrong road, and that every day is a gift from God. The Bible tells us to live each day as if it were our last, and a lot of people don't realize they could be their last today, and they might not have a chance to repent. Um, how, how, are you going to be here on Fat Tuesday tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is this, uh, how many Mardi Gras have you come to uh, to well, do this? I've, well, to do this, I've, uh, this is my second one to, uh, as a saint. I've been to 26 as a heathen. <laughs> 26 times you're here as a heathen, and now he's here as a saint. Praise Two times. Now that's a testimony, Johnny. Praise God. You know, I hope, I hope if you're an unbeliever, you hear uh, Johnny's testimony. That you see that he used to be down here in this debauchery, and then God did a miracle. Supernatural power of God changed him. He's born again. And this can happen to you right now. This can happen to you if you would call upon him and look to Jesus and be saved. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. And there's no way unto the Father except through him. Right. Salvation in no one else. There's no other name under heaven by which man can be saved. I mean, these are truths. These are, this is God's word. This is what God would be saying to you right now. And, and, and if you call upon him, he will save you. If you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And that's our prayer. Johnny and I, as we stand out here, we're saying, God, I'm available. I'm available. Draw him up to me. Let Amen. me testify to him. Let me tell him of the great things that you have done. Bring him. Bring him up. God, here we are. We're the light of the world, and we're shining the light into your, your, your living room right now that you might hear the truth, and the truth would set you free. And if you're a Christian, look at Johnny's out here holding a giant styrofoam cross. He would love for you to stand. You came here alone, huh, Johnny? That's right. Came alone. I mean, you're a man. He's at home. He wants to do something for Jesus. He makes this styrofoam cross that looks like it's solid wood. <laughs> and he comes out here alone. And I meet him. And, uh, and now you meet him. You need to call Johnny and say, hey, I'll go with you. I'll stand with you. I'll, I'll just encourage you. I'll, I'll smile at you when some of me comes up. I mean, there's so many things you can do for the Lord, and that's what we want to do, encourage you. Encourage you to find your place in the body. 
Seek the Lord. What are your calling? What is your gifting? John, he just, he was here for 26 years partying. And he, he says, oh, I need to go back there. I need to go back there. Maybe I'll see my old friends. Maybe I can minister to somebody as they walk by. Do you have that heart for the lost? Do you have that desire? If you don't, you need to seek the Lord for it. You need to examine yourself to see if you're even saved. And then come. We desire for you to come out. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, Jesus said. Look, the harvest is ripe. We're standing in this ripe harvest, man. There's just souls everywhere. Going to and fro, blinded by the God of this world. And we're the light. We can shine the light into there and stop them. They need Jesus. Oh. And I hope we see you out on the streets. See you next week. God bless.